Class 6 Subject Science Chapter Water. Water. Suppose for some reason your family gets only one bucket of water every day for a week. Imagine what would happen. Would you be able to cook, clean utensils, wash clothes or bathe? What are the other activities you would not be able to do? What would happen if we do not have easy access to water for a long period of time? Apart from drinking, there are reso many activities for which we use water. Do you have an idea about the quantity of water we use in a single day? Calculate the amount of water for each activity by you and other family members. You may use a mug, a glass, a bucket or any other container to measure the amount of water used. Uses of water. How much water do we use? List all the activities for which you use water in a day. Make a similar table in your notebook. Throughout the day, measure the amount of water used. Estimation of the amount of water used by your family in a day. Now have a rough idea as to how much water your family uses in a day. Can you estimate the amount of water used by you for personal cleanliness in a day? Using this information, calculate the amount of water needed by your family in a year. Now, divide this amount by the number of members of your family. This will give an idea of the amount of water needed by one member of your family in a year. Find the number of people that live in your village or town. Water. You have listed a number of activities for which you use water. Do you think, our water requirement is limited to activities like these? We use wheat, rice, pulses, vegetables and many other food items every day. We know that some of the fibers that we use for making fabric come from plants. Is water not needed to grow these? Can you think of some more uses of water? Water is used in industries for producing almost all the things that we use. So, we need water not only for our daily activities but also for producing many things. This water comes from a river, spring, pond, well or hand pump. Some others might say, we get water from taps. Have you ever wondered where water in the taps comes from? Water that we get from taps is also drawn from a lake or a river or a well. It is then supplied through a network of pipes. Water in taps comes from rivers, lakes, bore wells, or wells. Bujo wonders whether people living in different regions of our country get the same amount of water. Are there regions where people do not get an adequate amount of water? How do they manage? You may now get an idea of the amount of water needed by your village or town in a year. Pahaley wants to tell you that about two glasses of water are required to produce each page of a book. Each of us may be getting water into our homes in different ways. But, finally, all of us get water from the same sources such as ponds, lakes, rivers and wells. We have discussed some of the sources of water. Where does the water come from, to fill these ponds, lakes, rivers and wells? Bujo wants you to imagine a day in your life when water supply through taps is not available. So, you have to fetch it yourself from a faraway place. Would you use the same amount of water as on any other day? Where do we get water from? Where do you get the water that you use? Some of you may say, we draw from taps. Do you know that about two-thirds of the earth is covered with water? Most of this water is in oceans and seas. The water in the oceans and seas has many salts dissolved in it, the water is saline. So, it is not fit for drinking and other domestic, agricultural and industrial needs. You might have heard famous lines of the poem, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, written by S. T. Coleridge in 1798, Water water everywhere nor any drop to drink. Here the poet has described the plight of sailors on a ship lost in the ocean. Yet, oceans play an important role in supplying the water that we use. Do you find this surprising? After all, the water that we use is not salty. Many of us live in places far away from the oceans. Does the water supply in these places also depend on the oceans? How does the ocean water reach ponds, lakes, rivers and wells, which supply us with water? How come the water from these sources is not sailing anymore? Do you remember activity 6 in chapter 5 in which water with salt dissolved and it was heated? What did we find? The water evaporated and the salt was left behind. This activity gives you an idea that, on heating, water changes into its vapor. We also realize from this activity, that water vapor does not carry away the salt with it. 
water vapors so formed become a part of the air and cannot usually be seen. We also found that heating is essential to convert water into its vapor. However, we have seen that water changes into its vapor also. How many times have you noticed that water spilled on a floor dries up after some time? The water seems to disappear. Similarly, water disappears from wet clothes as they dry up. Water from wet roads, rooftops, and a few other V places also disappears after the rains. Where does this water go? We also discussed in Chapter 5 that to obtain salt, water from the sea is left in shallow pits to let the water evaporate. From where does this water get the heat it needs to evaporate? Let us find out. Take two similar plates. Place one of the plates in sunlight and keep the auth runner shade. Now, pour an equal amount of water into each of the plates you can use a cap of a bottle to measure the water. Make sure that water does not spill over. Observe the two plates after every 15 minutes. Does the water seem to disappear? From which plate does it disappear first? What is the source of heat for this evaporation? During the daytime, sunlight falls on the water in oceans, rivers, lakes and ponds. The fields and other land areas also receive sunlight. As a result, water from all these places continuously changes into vapor. This warm air provides heat for evaporation of water in the shade. Thus, evaporation takes place from all open surfaces of water. As a result, water vapor gets continuously added to air. However, evaporation of water is a slow process. That is why we rarely notice its loss from a bucket full of water. In sunlight, evaporation takes place faster. On heating water on a burner, its evaporation takes place even faster. Is there any other process through which water vapor gets transferred into air? Loss of water by plants. You have learned in Chapter 7 that plants need water to grow. Plants use a part of this water to prepare their food. Evaporation of water in sunlight and in shade, Bujo has been reading about transpiration. He asked himself how much water is lost through transpiration by wheat plants that give us 1 kilogram of wheat. He found out that this is nearly 500 liters, that is, roughly 25 large-sized buckets full of water. Can you now imagine the amount of water lost by plants of all the forests, crops and grasslands together? So what we conclude from it, that water is converted into water vapors from oceans, seas, open fields, wet clothes, crop fields, and also by the plants through transpiration. These water vapors in the atmosphere form the clouds. The condensation of these clouds causes rain, snow or hail, which fall back to the earth. Therefore there is a direct relationship between a glass of fresh water on the table and the saline water in oceans, water flowing in rivers and water frozen in glaciers.